for the economy, it's very good, Jud. Okay, it helps a lot in the economy. But when it comes to the culture, na, it's very a bad thing. Siya kay medyo malimtan na nato. What is practice? What is being kanang ay kato? What is being practice? And murag ano nata sa murag sa globalization. So you hear the sound, it, it's already time. Can you turn on your camera for this activity? Okay, everyone, almost everyone has turned on the camera. Shall we start now? Communicate globally with the use of internet or social media. So, as for the concerts, uh, marginalized poor community. So, it's hard for them to learn up the new things that happen in the world. Sir, sir. And marginalized com community are those who are excluded from mainstream, like social, social, economic, and educational, and our cultural life. For me, in a fortune perspective of the statement, I do believe that it is true because if we tend to make a barrier between the trade of foreign goods, if for example, it would be possible that one economy may fail and I think helping each other means also pro progressing the statement. Globalization is considered a double-edged sword since um, from what um, I think Jillian said earlier that it can help race a nation or it can also um, be a be a way to um, you know to lead an economy downwards but globalization allows us to um, interchange information with other countries that can also benefit us economy and globalization's primary um, primary objective is to be able to help each country um, move forward to a better tomorrow so in if in the perspective of the investor or a businessman or businesswoman, it will help you um, expand your scope of influence. Um, for uh, uh, business-wise speaking, but you know, as for the perspective of the poor, there are some products or you know foreign services that can that are not really that accessible towards the marginalized group. But if you were to put your eyes, you know, as an investor. It will help you um, reach um, greater limits with your business. So, we all know that globalization is the process of interaction and integration among people, companies, and governments worldwide. On the other hand, global network is any communication network which spans the entire Earth. Um, globalization and global networks are related that globalization is possible because of global networks. In order for globalization to occur, it is required that the key players of the globe should have an interaction or connection in order to understand and operate with one another. According to Jerry Yan, globalization and global networks are connected to each other. It then both countries will do business to make their own benefits as well as vice versa. So according to Nile, globalization is a process that integrates a global network of economic, political, social, and cultural independence on a worldwide scale. So as a youth, globalization seems to lead a borderless global community. Because as a youth, being aware and informed of the ongoing globalization could mean so much when it comes to worldwide innovation especially considering that the youth is the next generation of worldwide leaders due to the technological advancements youth are much more connected that, and have a wider perspective of things globally that might be the key to achieve the so-called borderless community the empowerment of the current young ones and their strong stand against issues that interfere with the connection that globalization brings can be proven that unity is truly possible. So as a part of youth, globalization is an interconnected relationship between two or more countries. And as a youth, I believe that globalization has indeed created a, created a borderless world. Globalization means interaction between masses in terms of culture, ideas, economy, and politics across the globe. Through the internet and as a youth in the 21st century, 
people across the world can communicate with each other within a fraction of seconds, regardless of borders. So that would be all. So globalization creates a greater opportunities for firms and less leaders to industrialize country to tap into more and larger markets as well. And the business located in developing countries have more access to capital flows, technology, human capital, cheaper imports, and larger export markets. And globalization really affect, affects the country, especially for the poor, because economic growth is the main channel through which globalization can affect poverty. Um, to what I have researched and what have the researchers given, when countries open up the trade, they tend to go faster and living standards tend to increase. And usually, um, it gives a lot of more benefits to the higher growth and trickle down the poor. And but galiso jud ang mga poor sir, if every time the standard is going to be increased, because um, not all people will kaya nila na maabot to na standards, sir. and that is really the fact inside our country, especially for the poor. And for the next question, globalization seems to lead to more or less global community. Um, as a professional, it really do support the globalization, which um, lead the borderless community because it is integrated on economies, economies and societies that has brought about um, a lot of changes globally. And this includes what, just like what I have said earlier, goods, services, capital, and, and information across seamless territorial borders. Um, globalization, in my personal, ex in my personal experience, well, and it is helpful to have a borderless global community because um, as a professional for example in a company as a professional it helps to interact or communicate towards other people because a professional worker must have must be having communications towards one nation to another nation like for example you're a company that is um, that is producing um, a product and you really need to have an investment towards other people in other country to also help um, to help your, to help, also help your company grow for their product. And therefore, as a professional worker of the company, and the company is having a borderless world and globalization, it is significantly helpful in terms of goods and services, and also for the better information that will be passed through, and also it gives a great technology to make the worker more easy towards its work. Um, Greg, so do you have um, enough uh, additional information about it? For the first question, how does global network affect the country? Um, it leads to some changes in our country, especially our economy, our employment rate. Our empl employment rate was boosted and that means our poverty rate would also go up. Innovation and integration is our key to better future and get out from being in a state of depression from our debts. Globalization led to many jobs and opportunities, thus making better future for the youth. Philippines is one of the countries in Asia where the country has been affected by globalization. The globalization is very effective in the Philippines. It has allowed major changes in the nation like more labor and more Filipino and foreign companies has emerged in the nation in order to help the country in developing economy. Generally, the Philippines is one of the most developing countries that is rapidly dealing with globalization ever since the colonialization of the U.S. in our country ever since. And now to give at least the big idea of this lesson or discussion that we have today, always bear in mind that globalization affects our life and everyone else, no matter no matter your, where your location is and the distance from other people, it affects everyone's life. Now, globalization has advanced even further. Now we have the internet. We have easy access from one country to the other and we have exchanged information and services like what we are doing right now. A while ago, I instructed you to make to have a group discussion among yourself. I don't know what, what were the means of discussions or, or the platforms you use to, to engage in the discussion, group discussion. But these are the best examples that we have this time. 
And part of the thing that we should not forget, part of the big idea, sabi ko na, the big idea is that globalization affects everyone. The other thing that we have to remember as part of the big idea of this discussion is that globalization seems to, seems to have two phases here. What are the two phases of globalization? It's the yin and the yang. The positive and the negative elements are close together when we speak of globalization. Because this concept describes opposites as interdependent and interconnected with each other. So that's the big idea that I want to share to you this morning. And globalization really seems to need a borderless global research on three days. We have these so-called dimensions of dimensions of globalization and I can give only some those I remember. Dimensions of globalization like economic globalization, sociocultural globalization, sociological globalization, and about political globalization. The, the current events, part of the current issues that we have now is the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. And this is the sole result of what we call political globalization. And it has affected so much many of the countries because there is that so-called uh, unification of government or so-called control of other government, we call it political globalization. 